Saturday is the day that I can look back and say, was this productive? Was this week effective? And yes, it was an incredibly productive week. I'm so proud of it. I look back and think, yes, I'm doing good work. 4 a.m. wake ups, right to a run, completing projects at work, getting everything I need completed for the certificate program, studying my languages. It's a great time to be able to sit back and say, yes, job well done. I look forward to this every week. I also look forward to this day because I finally take a breath, finally slow down. It's the one day where I will sleep in. The body isn't meant to get four and a half hours of sleep each night, three and a half if you include my Friday when I was trying to complete an essay for the certificate. So Saturday, Friday night, I get to sleep early and sleep in as long as I need. I just don't set the alarm or I set the alarm, but give myself a window of about 10 hours. Then I'm up and ready to work for the day. It's a bit more relaxed than normal, but it's still good work. And that's what I wanna talk about. The importance of rest, but recognizing that rest doesn't mean that you need to lose out on an entire weekend. Rest doesn't mean that you need to spend all of a day lounging. As you grow in your disciplines and your habits, as you become more focused, as you become more intent on reaching your goals, it reshapes how you think about relaxation. So for me, Saturday, relaxation looks like sleeping in and then spending the rest of the day being productive. Now, I'm not as hard on myself as I am during the rest of the week. Every moment, making good use of it. Awake early, asleep late, not wasting time, all of that. Saturday, a little bit lighter. For example, I took my sister on another college tour. It was brief, we didn't have an official tour scheduled, but we drove to Florida Atlantic and visited the campus. Now normally, this would mean because I'm in the car, I'm listening to podcasts or I'm listening to my language learning Pimsleur program. And I'm practicing, repeating back what the program tells me to say. I'm pausing, jumping back as necessary to make sure that I understand exactly what's being said, that I'm building my vocabulary, that I'm growing and acquiring this language. Not today. Today, driving in the car with her and it's having conversation and sometimes having conversation when it doesn't have a specific goal attached an expectation attached can seem like a waste of time can seem like you know there's something better i should be doing with my time right now there's something i can be doing right now instead that would be more effective do i really need to be having this conversation do i really need to be sitting down and speaking with this person what's the purpose what am i getting out of this people aren't merely an accumulation of statistics and variables and matters related to these goals you set for yourself. This is pretty obvious. This isn't something that should need to be said, but there are pitfalls. There are dangers associated with revving up a life of intensity, a life of extreme focus, a life of hard work. In this kind of life, it can be easy to reframe certain areas of life in a way that's not healthy or not helpful. So every now and then, there are guardrails that are helpful to put up things to remind yourself of that ultimately make you more productive in the long run, and this is one of them. So back to rest. There was, or there were, two schools of philosophical thought in in Athens following the time of Aristotle that I studied during college, the Epicureans and the Stoics. Those two groups, those two schools of thought presented a comparison, as far as I can remember, a comparison between an understanding what the aim of man is, what is the ultimate aim of a human life. And on one side, you have an understanding of these two ways of living life, the active and the contemplative life, as the primary goal in life related to these two categories is to be active in order that you may come back to the contemplative life. And by active, I mean serving your fellow man, working, growing as a professional, things of that nature. It's you need to be active in order to come back to a place not of of rest and relaxation, but a place of contemplation, a place of deep thinking, a place where you are considering considering, considering how the world works, considering meaning. And the other school of thought had this flipped. It's not to say that they rejected the active life or the contemplative life, but they flipped the emphasis. Instead of saying the goal is to return to that contemplative life, do whatever you need to do in this active life to get back to the contemplative, Instead, it was the contemplative life is meant to be in service of the active life. The contemplative life, the the part of your life where you are thinking deeply, recovering, refocusing, that area of your life, that time is 
for the purpose of returning you back to the active life, the life involved where you're involved with other people in service to your fellow man. That was the ultimate aim, the service of your fellow man. And what way was that to be accomplished? It was through the contemplative life with the purpose, the aim being the active life. So these are two different approaches to living your life, two different emphases. All of this to say, when you consider the effort that you're putting into every week, the things that you're trying to accomplish, you can consider rest or take part in rest in a way that's like the contemplative life, in a way that's like what those two schools of thought espoused thousands of years ago. Let your rest fuel your work. Don't look at it as being in a separate category, isolated from your goals, isolated what you're trying from what you're trying to accomplish, but instead as being used in service of. Or maybe your goals are a little different. Maybe your goals are the other way around. You are working you are studying, you are achieving, in order that one day or a part of each day, you can have that moment of quiet. You can have that moment of contemplation. You can have that experience of taking a deep breath. Perhaps that's your aim what you are doing all of these things for so that you can have that in a similar way look at all that you are doing as being in service to that contemplative life that rest everything that you're doing now your work your study your commitments your projects all of those things toward that goal i was speaking with my brother and we were expressing a similar experience a similar notion that we seem to be running up against we both are excited about the idea or and want to one day own large pieces of land large plots of land we each have different ideas of what we would use it for i'm excited about sustainability and the idea of being able to naturally raise sustenance for family he has his own reasons not necessarily separate from my own and we were talking about how do we get to that point how do we get to this place where we can have this and it seems like it seems like to both of us when we were talking as if in order to get to this place where we are away from the concentration of people in a city to get away from this busyness which is exciting but to get away from that busyness it's as if we first must go into it before we can come back as if we must first go into the city do our work there do what needs to be done there before we can one day come back and have such a life here again is a parallel to the active and contemplative life so look at your day look at your goals look at what you're doing trying to accomplish and to what end and instead of breaking them into separate categories categories that have no relation to one another consider them in terms of how they integrate with one another how each goal each thing that you're doing each purpose, everything related to work and to rest, to thinking, to labor, how they integrate together. That way, whatever you're doing, whether it's rest or work, you'll be doing both without wasting time.